Section 57 of the Constitution says that if the House of Representatives passes any proposed law and the Senate rejects or fails to pass it or passes it with amendments to which the House of Representatives will not agree, if after an interval of three months the House of Representatives in the same or the next session again passes the proposed law with or without any amendments which have been made, suggested or agreed to by the Senate and the Senate rejects or fails to pass it or passes it with amendments to which the House of Representatives will not agree, the Governor General may dissolve the Senate and the House of Representatives simultaneously. But such dissolution shall not take place within six months before the date of the expiry of the House of Representatives by a fiction of time. If after such dissolution the House of Representatives again passes the proposed law with or without any amendments which have been made, suggested or agreed to by the Senate and the Senate rejects or fails to pass it or passes it with amendments to which the House of Representatives will not agree, the Governor General may convene a joint sitting of the members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives. The members present at the joint sitting may deliberate and shall vote together upon the proposed law as last proposed by the House of Representatives and upon amendments, if any, which have been made therein by one House and not agreed to by the other. And any such amendments which are affirmed by an absolute majority of the total number of the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives shall be taken to, be, to have been carried, and if the proposed law with the amendments, if any, so carried, is affirmed by an absolute majority of the total number of the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, it shall be taken to have been duly passed by both Houses of the Parliament and shall be presented to the Governor General for the Prince of Got it? Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this channel is called Aussie Law and today we will talk about section 57 of the constitution, deadlocks, double dissolution and joint city. Let me start with a bit of historic context here to this provision. Remember that in my last video I said that the senate was kind of like a platypus. The framers tried to make it in a way that it would both agree to the principle of federalism and also the principle of responsible government. And the key issues in that regard related to the powers of the Senate to propose and amend money bills, to the equal representation of states in the Senate, and also with the possibility of a double dissolution of both houses of parliament. Section 57 then exists as a response to that latter aspect. We can divide section 57 into distinct and successive stages on how a disagreement between the two houses of parliament may come to an end. The first step acknowledges that disagreement between the two houses may occur. We will call this the first deadlock. It happens when the Senate rejects or fails to pass a bill that has passed the House of Representatives or if the Senate proposes amendments or amends the bill in such a way that the House of Representatives will not agree. Deadlocks happen when the Senate and the House of Representatives disagree on a bill that was passed by the House or the House of Representatives disagree to a proposed amendment or an amendment made by the Senate to a bill that was approved by the House of Representatives. If this first deadlock occurs, the Constitution says that there must be an interval of three months. This is the chill your mind and compromise kind of break. As Quick and Garen said, this is on time for consideration and conciliation and to permit of the development and manifestation of public opinion throughout the Commonwealth. After that period, if the House of Representatives again passes that bill and the Senate once more rejects or fails to pass it or presents an amendment or amends in a way that the House of Representatives does not agree to, then we will have a second deadlock and the Governor General may dissolve both houses simultaneously. This is called a double dissolution. Both houses will be dissolved or in plain terms both the senators and the MPs will lose their seats and new elections will be held. We have had seven double dissolutions in Australia since 1901. They happened in 1914, 51, 74, 75, 83, 87 and 2016. There's something important that I should mention here. And I'm not talking about the fact that if you are liking this video, you should be clicking the like button and also subscribing to our channel. I'm referring to the fact that the Governor General may not dissolve both Houses of Parliament if the second deadlock happens within six months of the date of the expiry of the House of Representatives. That's because the members of the House of Representatives could use this constitutional mechanism to call new elections for the Senate, therefore making the Senators, who have six years term, lose their term and have to compete again in new elections. And more, if new elections are happening soon, there's no point in dissolving them and calling new elections when these new elections are going to happen for the House of Representatives nonetheless. 
So if it is within the six months before the expiry of the House of Representatives, there will be no double dissolution. But if a double dissolution does happen and new elections are called, the Constitution still establishes a new step that should be taken in case a new deadlock happens. If there is a third deadlock, meaning that the House of Representatives has passed the same bill again and the Senate rejected it again, then the Governor General may convene what is called a joint sitting. Following the advice of responsible ministers, the Governor General, after a third deadlock, may convene a joint sitting between the two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. This is the last chance for Parliament to vote the bill, vote on the amendments and decide whether the bill will be passed or not. For the bill to pass in a joint sitting, it must be affirmed by an absolute majority of all the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. If it reaches that threshold of the combined seats of both houses, then it will be presented for royal assent as if it was approved as any other ordinary bill that has gone through the regular process of Parliament. Although we have had seven double dissolutions, we only had one joint sitting in 1974. This episode marked the beginning of what is known as the Constitutional Crisis of 1975 and the infamous dismissal of the Whitlam government by the Governor-General of the time, Sir John Kerr. If you want to know more about this episode, the Constitutional Crisis of 1974, click the like button, click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, because my next video will talk about that. I hope to see you then. Ciao.